Okay. So, for those of you who want to know um, who Damien Eccles is and why I have so many pictures with this man and uh, who the West Memphis Three is, uh, for those of you who are wondering why I call them that. So, this is the, this is the story. In 1993, in um, a little town of West Memphis, Arkansas, there was a thing going around called Satanic Panic, where they thought there were devil worshippers and satanic rituals being performed and done in this town, in this religious, growing town. And someone who looked like Damien was their vision of what a devil worshipper looked like, who was someone who dresses in black, listens to Metallica, heavy metal music, reads Stephen King books, and practices the Wicca religion. Um, at that time, he wanted to be a Roman Catholic priest, but he also dabbled into Wicca. Um, so, the police department and this guy named Jerry Driver, who's a big asshole, um, was after Damien. They, they wanted to put him away so bad. They tried to find so many reasons. Uh, Jerry Driver put him in a mental institution for no reason at all. Um, and then when this crime happened, they automatically pinned it on Damien, and this is what they did. Um, they thought that Jesse Miss Kelly, who was one of the three men convicted, was a good friend of Damien's, but they weren't really, they were more like acquaintances, and Jesse Miss Kelly has an IQ of 72. He runs the level of about a five-year-old. So, they take him in. And without his understanding of how rights work and how interrogations work, they interrogated him for 12 hours, abused him, harassed him, you know, hit him, spit on him, whatever it was, for 12 hours. And during that 12 hours, only two hours of it was recorded, and supposedly Jesse Miss Kelly confesses in this two hours. And really what it was, they coerced a confession out of him, which means... He was so tired, he wanted to go home, that he said whatever they wanted him to say. And that's how they got the confession out of him. But he didn't testify, and the next day he recanted that statement. So when they went into trial, um, he had a separate trial from Jason and Damien. And Jason Baldwin is Damien Eccles' best friend. And the only reason why Jason was convicted is because he was friends with Damien. Guilt by association, as they say but there was no guilt involved. So, so then Jesse has a different trial from Jason and Damien, and there was plenty of people who wanted these men convicted, or boys, because they were 18, 17, and 16 at the time of the murders. Um, and there was a guy who wanted them convicted. He becomes jury of the foreman and tells the jury in Damien and Jason's trial that Jesse, Miss Kelly, confessed. So already right there we have a uh, a jury misconduct there because it's not even supposed to be released into that trial so right there they should throw the case out um, there were many problems with this case beginning with a bloody man who walked into a Bojangles restaurant the night of the murders bloody sweat mud all over him the three boys were found in a ditch in a river um, naked bound hogtied one of them was castrated it was it was terrible so this bloody man the, he gets his DNA all over the walls. They don't even get the DNA till the next day. And then they lose it. In court, they ask where it's at, and he says, I'm sorry, I lost it. You lost it? Bullshit. So there's a lot of different things that are, that's wrong with this case. Not just that, but the fact that they have no DNA against the three men convicted. Absolutely none. They have more DNA against a man named Terry Hobbs, who is one of the step fathers of the victims. They have him, he has no alibi. Um, the man he said he was with that day, Jacob Jacoby, says he was not with him. He was the last guy seen with the three boys that day by three different witnesses. Um, they've had a witness come forward and say that he told them that he killed those three boys. Blood was found in his truck that he sold a week after the murder, and blood was found in his house. Unfortunately, the blood that they found is too old to do DNA testing on. So, as of right now, uh, well, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, so I'll backtrack. Um, so, they ended up convicting Damien, Jason, and Jesse. Um, 
same. Uh, Jason and Jesse got life without parole plus 40 years, and Damien got death row because he was supposedly the ringleader of this satanic ritual that they had done. So, they go to jail, and Damien gets beaten up by the prison guards. He's tortured, and in that time, he writes a book called Almost Home. Um, unfortunately, he does not sell this book anymore. And if you go on Amazon, people are selling it for about $200, $400, which is ridiculous. Um, but it's a really good book. And um, so during that time, a uh, documentaries were made during the court trial, which are called Paradise Lost, uh, child, The Childhood Murders of Robin Hood Hill. Um, there's actually three different ones by Paradise Lost. And if you want to look those up, they have them. Um, there's also another documentary called West of Memphis that was produced by uh, Peter Jackson and co-produced by Damien and his wife, Lori. Um, that will be coming out in Florida in March, uh, sometime in March. Uh, it's called West of Memphis. Uh, you can look up the trailer on YouTube right now. It's really good. It's really amazing. I can't wait to see it. Um, so, going to his wife. Uh, Lori saw the documentary that was done in 1996. She wrote Damien a letter, and they started writing about 5,000 letters back and forth um, and ended up falling in love with each other. She quit her job as an architect in New York, moved to West Memphis, Arkansas to be closer to Damien and wor work wholeheartedly on his case. She took out two loans in order to hire new investigators new uh, DNA, you know, testing and all this stuff. And in the meantime, there were celebrities, such as Eddie Vedder, Natalie Maines, uh, Johnny Depp, uh, and millions of others. Peter Jackson, as I said before, joined in. And there's so many more. If you just Google celebrities that support the West Memphis Three, you'll see them. Uh, Henry Rollins, many different ones. And they all uh, donated money to their cause to get you DNA testing and so forth and so what. So, they found all the DNA, and then 18 years later, last year, August 19th, uh, 2011, um, well, before this, they were, uh, they went to the Supreme Court and showed, told them that they have all this new evidence from then and now, and that they should be granted a new hearing. So, the judge granted them an evidentiary hearing, which means they'll go to court and present all the evidence that they have, all the DNA testing, everything that they've had from then and now. But, the pro which would lead to a new trial, and the new trial would lead to their exoneration. But the problem is, is the state knew that if they got a new trial, they would be set free. And then that would mean they'd be getting sued for $60 million, and they would be admitting they're wrong. So, in order to avoid that, they gave Damien, Jason, and Jesse um, a plea bargain, which means uh, it's an Alfred plea, uh, which means they go to court, they say, I'm innocent of these charges, I've always been innocent, but I'm pleading guilty, so you'll let me go. It's basically a way for the state not to get sued and not to admit they were wrong, to get these people off their backs, to close the case and never hear about it again, which is bullshit once again. So... Uh, they all had to agree with it. At first, Jason Baldwin would not agree. But the reason why they agreed is because Damien's on death row. They're trying to kill him. He's dying. His health, they have no health care on death row. He, you know, they're not going to spend the time to take care of someone who they're planning on killing anyways. So, he tried, he had to get this. And Jason Baldwin realized that and decided to take the deal. Um, it's no, it's not justice in any way, but it's a way for them, for Damien to have his life saved and to be able to work outside of the jail. So then, Damien writes this book, Life After Death. You can get this book on Kindle, on eBooks, on iTunes, um, Audiobook. You can get it on Amazon, eBay, you know, whatever. This book is everywhere in your local bookstores. It is an amazing book. I've had the um, opportunity to meet Damien and he signed my book. Um, I actually have two books, and he signed both of them, one time in New York, and this time was um, in Tennessee. I don't know why I didn't bring this book for him to sign, but I didn't, and I kind of wish I did. But, um, anyway, so, uh, writing that book, he decided to go on a book tour in order to get 
the word out. He, you know, he's got to constantly do interviews, which he hates. He hates opening those wounds over and over and over. But he's got to do it in order to keep the case alive, to get it reopened, which would lead to a new trial, which leads to their exoneration, and hopefully to find the real murderer. So, he's been going on book tours. I've attended two of them. One of the first one was in New York with Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp is they're like brothers basically. And um, that was the first time I got to meet Damien. And then, um, so uh, the second time he went to Tennessee, I met him in Tennessee. He knew exactly who I was the first time and the second time I met him. I met his wife as well. She's a gorgeous woman. She's so beautiful and so amazing. Her name is Lori Davis. Um, then I went to New York for a third time to go to New Jersey to see the documentary West of Memphis. Um, unfortunately, it got canceled. Damien got really sick. But I had the rare opportunity to get to hang out with Damien for several hours at a tattoo shop. And he, in the meantime, he tattooed me. He tattooed me. Um, right here. Oh, there it is. And it's, um, my most favorite tattoo in the whole world. Uh, but, yeah, it was nice getting, you know, to talk to him and getting to know him. And, uh, spending time with his his friends as well, and getting to know his friends. So, there was that, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. He's fighting for exoneration, and he's traveling the world, and talking about the documentary, and doing book signings, and he's an inspiration to me, because I can relate to him. Um, he gives me, you know, such courage, and strength, and motivation to keep going, and knowing that if he can do that, if he can get through what he got through, I can get through whatever I have. Because it's not as bad as that. And he's my hero, basically. And I'm so lucky to to know him, to be able to talk to him. So if you're interested in getting to know more about him, getting to know more about the case, um, you can look up DamienEccles.com. Um, you could also go to West Memphis free the west memphis three dot org or dot com it's one of those um you can also find Damien on twitter at Damien Eccles. um he also has an instagram i would look up just Damien Eccles because his tweet his instagram name is really weird but um you can find tons and tons and tons of videos on youtube about Damien and interviews he has done um and yeah that's that's pretty much it so uh yeah so if you've listened to this video, I appreciate your time, and I hope you tell your friends and family. Thank you. Up in this cage, can't they see it's why my brain says.